Good morning. It's definitely fall and I am way behind on uploading a lot of our older weekly tour videos, which I do have. Um, I just haven't edited them yet. So I'm gonna try to jump ahead to now because I know a lot of people who watch are actually local and wondering what my garden's doing. I've gotten a few questions. Um, so we are definitely in the fall transition. You'll notice that the hoop house is fully closed now. We are at the middle end of September. Um, we will be at the Westminster Farmer's Market today, so I've got um, my buckets and everything that I'm going to be harvesting early this morning. Definitely <laughs> cold. We got bees sleeping on flowers, so I'm going to have to be really careful when I'm harvesting. Uh, it's still pretty, pretty early this morning. Um, tomatoes are still going, which is great. Um, it's one of the benefits of doing lower and lean is I don't have as much blight issues. So you can see that they're still decently healthy, um, but they've definitely slowed down. So colder nights, it's about 47 degrees. I got my, my hat on this morning um, out here. Um, 45, 47 degrees this morning. Um, these are definitely taking a little bit longer to ripen, although the entire season it they have. Um, these are the Lizzie's that I've been cutting from mostly um, for early season, and I will clean some of these up. Um, as you can see, some of the buds are good, but I hadn't come in and actually pruned off some of the older, older buds. So we'll have some of these um, harvested today. The back Lizzie's here, I finally got through and cleaned up the alyssum. Um, I need to actually get back in and clean up the piles now. Um, but these are almost all apricot, I'm pretty sure, um, which are absolutely stunning when they open. These are definitely stunted, so not as tall as I would like. Um, and because it, these are the fall ones, it's um, it's not, we're, we're gonna cut all the way down, probably pull the whole plug, actually, um, when I come and, and harvest these. So these aren't quite ready over here, but I do have some over in the other garden I will show you guys. Carrots, well, I should go marigolds first. Um, they got hit with the Lee storm pretty bad, so I do need to come in here and clean up. I've cleaned up some of the Lee damage already, um, but ouch. <laughs> uh, but I may try to actually do some more garlands today. Um, and they are really nice from fall. They brighten up our booth when I can do a garland across um, parts of the, the top there. So um, more to come on those if I get, get to them. I've been keeping up with cutting the straw flowers um, from this bed as they open. And I've been actually starting to do some of the fall crafts, which has been great. And these marigolds I let go too far over the last few weeks. Um, so they probably won't be too much good for cuttings, but I'll see if I can get some. The Harvest Moons, we've sold out almost. I mean, this is not bad for first year of this color. Um, we'll bring a couple of these today to the market, but for the most part, um, some of the snails or the slugs got in here. You can kind of see the damage here and here. Um, so I'm not gonna be bringing those. This next row, are uh, the triple berry I think is what they're called. These are for my friend's wedding next week so I'm really excited. They look like they are going to be perfectly timed for the wedding so um, we will actually start moving those to her place which is right next to the, the um, function area um, so that we don't have to travel too far after that. Um, over here these are the pumpkin igloos. And these also got hit with Lee a little bit. You'll see some of them are leaning and things like that. So um, I'm gonna be very choosy on which ones we sell going forward. You'll notice another piece of a miracle there from this guy from Lee. Um, and then in the back here, I'll get to those in a second, but those are the ones we're gonna really be pushing today at the market. You'll notice some of the fall purple asters, these small ones. Um, unfortunately, they're not really sellable this year. And I'm really bummed by that because that's a big expense to not be able to sell. So for these, the bunnies and the deer ate them down twice. And so it has not been a good experience trying to grow these. Um, they will have to be under cover tunnel oh, um, 
or you know like an ag 15 like the really lightest like bug cloth type of ag cloth um, in order to uh, to grow those in the future um, so that's a bummer but we'll see um, carrots so this bed is actually I did a test last night and check them. I need to harvest some carrots today, so we will actually probably have carrot bunches at the market today. We have a few lizzies over here. I needed to stake these up and I didn't get to it, but they're actually, the stems are pretty good and long. Um, they're just a little curved, so I will be probably harvesting from those. We have Thai chilies and we're gonna have tons, so I'll be harvesting some of those for the market as well with big warning signs because those are a little hotter than what people are used to. Um, jalapenos are doing amazing. So really want some of these to start turning red, um, but I <laughs> have to be patient. Um, the guajillos, we actually did harvest some um, finally turning red. Um, and we did lose a big branch to the Hurricane Lee. Um, these are fantastic once they're dehydrated. Um, ripened to red and, um, and picked and dehydrated. Um, we throw them in soups, sauces, all sorts of different things. Poblanos, I need to harvest again because these, um, this one got hit with Lee pretty good and, and bent over. And um, there's a ton on here. Our, um, my onions that I started late that um, are really for next year. They seem to be doing pretty well. Lettuce, these stuff, fall lettuce is gorgeous. Um, it's just, it, it's just gorgeous. I love it. Um, it's nice and a little thicker leaved, crispy, um, right out of the garden. So, um, have a lot growing right here and over here and actually plan to bring about five or six heads of lettuce today for the market. I might be doing some little uh, mini bouquets today, so um, the Fever Few will be perfect for that. That's actually a second cutting of Fever Few. I harvested uh, four pounds, I think, of pigment peppers um, last night, so we will be having those at the market today. Um, I actually harvested a bunch of the, this parsley um, for the freeze dryer, so we can have some of our own parsley all winter long. Bell peppers, I did harvest some. Um, they're still going pretty decent. I harvest enough to finish the freezer. Um, uh, the freezer quantities. So we have enough to get us through the winter at this point, which is great. Um, basil, I'm waiting to hear back on an order. Um, could be anywhere between uh, five and 10 pounds of basil. Basil's a fantastic um, crop uh, to grow um, for sale. Um, I'm not sure I'll bring any today because it does not last um, once you cut it very well, unless you're putting it in the water. Um, Dill, I still need to harvest a whole bunch for the freeze dryer, so once the parsley batch is done, we'll hopefully get to that before it goes by. Here's another look at these poblanos. And over here I've got more jalapenos as well. On this side, I got tons more basil, and I've been picking these um, celosia for drying. They are just so cute, um, nice and bright. And see the lettuce. So I definitely have a few extra lettuce heads um, to uh, to harvest today. I may also here's another parsley batch. I may do some parsley um, ties for drying for people for the market today. More basil, more basil, right? Um, kind of everywhere. I picked two and a half pounds or something of cayenne peppers ripe yesterday. I haven't seen my little buddy, my little tree frog um, in here, but he's usually in here guarding all the bugs. The um, dew is so thick, it almost looks like frost. It's crazy. Thankfully, it's not. We're not anywhere near cold enough for that <laughs> yet. Um, but we are at the risk stage now. The spinach bed didn't have fantastic germination in this spot, 
not sure what happened to that row <laughs> if I just missed it um, but uh, this is actually starting to come it should really pick up over the next couple d days or so now that we have the first true leaves here are the they're called jack-o-lanterns and I don't know if you can see this color but it's they're all fade colors so it's a yellow with a fade an orange ish and a red um, and I think these are gonna be really gorgeous when they fully pop the tags show them pretty bright actually so focus on my hand here so you can kind of see that they've got these little darker centers which I really liked um, very dew co covered right now so these ones we will have at the market as our main seller today Back here, we lost a bunch of dahlias to Lee, which was a big bummer. Um, uh, one of them, this guy here, was like six feet tall and had like four or five gorgeous um, buds and all the stuff. Definitely lost that one. Um, but I will be picking some of these for the market today. And look at these, aren't they amazing? So I got these from another local farmer who, um, has been growing down like focused really on dahlias for a good couple years um, and uh, yeah very happy with the quality and just isn't it beautiful so um, <laughs> the cosmos behind it is already kind of gone by but um, hoping to get quite a bit out of these so we'll see the tunnel I've got a lot of zinnias to pick over here thankfully um, I've got some basil filler over there at the end too that I let go to flower. And um, tons of dill that I need to pull down. These marigolds, um, <laughs> I didn't tie up very well. And since they're up higher, they definitely got hit with um, the wind a lot worse. Um, picked cucumbers out of here, more beans. It's like I have more beans ready again. Um, we're pretty much done with beans for the season though, so I'm, I'm not focused on those as much. And actually I may um, try to take these down sooner than later. We did do a couple of the yard long beans this year. Again, I think they self seeded. Um, but uh, always, always kind of fun looking at those. Our sweet potatoes. They've been doing pretty good. Um, again, you don't really know until you uh, get to uh, open them up and see what actually um, happened. Um, but it looks like I am not getting the germination, these flowers are falling off. Um, here's another flower. So I'm watching to see if I get any seed pods. Um, I, it's been continuously flowering. Ooh, I don't know who this guy is. Um, it's been continuously flowering uh, pretty, pretty well for about, I don't know, a good month or so, maybe longer at this point. Um, so we'll see if I can find seed pods when in here if they get to that stage um, but not looking great um, even though there were so many flowers um, they had to make sure that I, I didn't self uh, pollinate although I not self pollinate I didn't um, manually pollinate them so maybe what I'll do is I'll try to find another flower today and, and uh, do it for the for the plant. Um, some of these flowers were getting pretty deep in here, and my guess is, like, here you go. So if I take this flower and grab the pollen from here and mix it with over there and the pollen from the other one I just showed you, um, we should be able to get some cross germination. So, still experimenting. I have more carrots over here that are ready. Some more. Uh, baby lettuce so you can see I'm growing this really tightly right and that's so I can actually um, just grab a bunch a little pinch of a handful and transplant them so uh, we are getting close to the point where we'll actually start turning over the hoop house as well for the fall um, but I may even you know like the one of the pepper beds or one of these beds I might even just um, clean out pretty quick um, uh, here in the next week or two and then the lettuce would go in here with a cover 
um, on this bed that keeps growing out here. But I do have some more beautiful lettuce heads that I can sell today at the market. More carrots, more basil. And that is the theme of, I put a little bit of everything in every bed, um, but it works pretty well. Um, I thought this was interesting. So as soon as I picked off those two long pie pumpkins, the long pie plant has been really heavily trying to go and get more fruit going. Um, oh, my baby watermelon is absolutely tiny and it died. So <laughs> this is a really sad. Um, but yeah, here's some more long pie pumpkins here. So we'll see how it does. Um, that plant is considering uh, it definitely had some powdery mildew. Um, it's actually doing pretty good and can't really complain about that. More beans, <laughs> they're everywhere. So on top of this, we have onions that we'll be bringing. Um, we've got our cutting boards that my dad makes that Jace and him mill some, the lumber for most of it. Um, and then I've got some dried flower wreaths coming today. And um, yeah, it should be hopefully a good market. It's supposed to be partly sunny all day long. And uh, in here, we moved a bunch of these pots inside now. Um, it's about 55 in here, so not too bad. Um, a lot warmer than out there, actually. Um, uh, habaneros, I may bring some of those. Um, our dahlias in here are just taking off now. We really need to get that shade cloth off today. We'll see if we can get to that. Some more feverfew. This again, second cut feverfew. I can't complain about that. The status, I need to cut this for drying. Um, might bring a bunch of these snapdragons today. Here's another apricot Lizzie that's ready. Um, I've got some of the blue flash still in here, the pinks. Um, here's another sweet potato flower actually that I could eat cross pollinate with today. Um, over here, um, these are actually considered a green Lysianthus, but they're like a cream green and they are just absolutely stunning. So I'll have those today. The tomatoes are doing all right. We've got a bunch of cherry tomatoes up there that are ripe and sorry you against the sun here so not the best view and looks like that cucumber got pollinated a little funny but um, for the most part I've already picked uh, we have tons of cucumbers coming today for us not not as much as a typical farm but um, but quite a bit for us um, this is considered a red Lysianthus it's like a deep pink um, and it's it's pretty gorgeous. So here you go. 58.3 is the temperature in here and It looks like it got down to about 48 or so as the lowest temp in here in the last week And that's we didn't close it every night, so that's part of the uh, why um, This is the guajillo that we lost the other day, so we're trying to get it to ripen. I'll have to change out the water today um, and just really hope that the fruit does okay. Um, it's not the end of the world if it doesn't, but I definitely want those red when we harvest. And here's the sad part. Um, we had a deer come with her two babies and in one night they devoured almost everything. <laughs> so um, almost all my zinnias and uh, all but a few of these sunflowers, which um, all of the um, uh, Celosia rain that I had out here, all of the amaranth that we had out here, um, a bunch of the lizzies. So you'll notice that we do have um, the fishing line up now. We just took too many chances. Um, but you can see how devastating they were. This was finally looking good for the first time this year. Um, all the snapdragons that were out here, gone. Um, more of the late sunflowers, gone. Um, so this bed is really just a few zinnias left um, here. Uh, 
this is really, really quite sad. Um, and uh, just a few sunflowers there. I have one to cut today over there and that's about it. And then my straw flowers, they don't touch. Um, but pretty much everything else is gone. Um, so uh, yeah, pretty, pretty disappointing over there. Over here, the basil also just got hit with some of the blight, which is unfortunate before I was able to move them. Um, tomatillos are, actually we probably have some of those for the market today. You can see here, um, this was <laughs> a bunch of the tracks that we have just in the last week or so. Um, mostly the baby deer and the mom deer, but I think there was some coyote in here too. Um, not, uh, but the bear didn't come back since we tilled it. Um, he kept coming back, so we just gave up on the corn. <laughs> um, over here, this is uh, the other batch of fall lizzies, and you'll notice we do have a fishing line up. They actually were eating the radishes too. Oh, sad. They ate a whole bunch of the pumpkin that I was supposed to bring to the market today. Um, so, uh, it is, um, yeah, it's hard. You know, you want to make sure that they have food, but preferably not in my garden. Um, so, again, these are actually considered green lizzies, even though they're like a pale white with just a green tint. Um, a lot of these are not ready for picking yet. Um, so, what we did was, um, uh, I'll go through and actually pick off these first blooms so the rest of the plant can get the energy. Um, there's a couple browns that are ready over here, uh, and so I will pick those. Um, and then it looks like the apricot is just a little bit more shaded or something over here, probably because of this pumpkin. Um, these are our jack-o'-lantern pumpkins. You can see a little bite out of that one. Um, and I don't think they've gotten into this guy yet. Um, I did rotate them. If you have pumpkins, you should be rotating them. Um, I thought it was really interesting. The uh, deer also, well, with the cucumber too, but um, they also were eating radishes. Like, they're, radishes are supposed to be the crop that nobody wants. Um, so you can kind of see um, where Jay put the fishing line to. Um, but yeah, really odd year. Um, the branching sunflowers are mostly done at this point. Um, I might have a few I can pick today, but uh, nothing a, a big amount. Um, oh, that's a bummer. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, wow. Um, so this pumpkin was supposed to be partly, um, you know, of a fun thing to have at our booth today. Obviously that is not happening now. Um, over here I do have some delphiniums that I can, might be able to pick in the back there. But most of these have let go by um, so that they can do what better next year. Verbena I can bring today. Rhubarb and asparagus are doing well. Um, the deer also ate my three dahlias here, there, there, and there, um, which is a bummer. Um, and my calendula also. Um, let's see. Sedum, this is the first year for these plants, so I'm not sure I'll cut from them at all. Or nothing major. These are the, I think, Chinese forget-me-nots here. Um, so I may try cutting some of these stems today. Um, I did use them when they were in this branching stage for the flower crown last week for my friend's wedding. That worked pretty good. Um, you can see some more zinnias got eaten here. Thankfully most of these haven't been found so I'll have at least these big yellows, some greens over here to pick from for today. But for the most part the gardens are definitely slowing down for fall and um, yeah just a, a bit of a bummer on the deer uh, situation over on these gardens but not completely unsurprising either. This has been a great straw flower color. Nice white, white and pink will be really I think fantastic for Christmas 
Um, and then the sun balls are ready to pick, so I need to pick those. The deer will love those if they find them, so I'm hoping that they do not find them <laughs> at, at this point. So I think that's a full garden tour. We definitely need to get that shade cloth off to get that poop going, and I just saw the chipmunk go right into the poop house, so we need to start putting some of the um, rodent repellent stuff. Um, we try to stay all natural, especially since we're in such a wildlife area here. Uh, so yeah, so we'll start doing more and more big harvests, trying to get the freeze dryer going a lot more, and hopefully market goes well today, but I will keep you guys updated on how we do.